the shooting at Dave's mansion. The night I got shot started like any other night. I was doing the night shift at the Yara Valley police station. For the last four years, I had been stuck doing the night shift. This was because I was a conscientious objector to bashing people who disagreed with Chairman Dan's policies. While this hadn't caused my dismissal, it had caused another unwanted side effect. I was stuck doing night shifts. Would you like a donut, Michael? I bought a pack of donuts. I have strawberry, chocolate and salted caramel donuts, my colleague Eric said. I reflected over the politest way of declining Eric's offer. Combining night shifts with an unhealthy diet was a certain way to gain unwanted weight. Although people called police officers pigs, I didn't want to have the body composition of an actual pig. Thank you, Eric, but I am on a diet, I replied. But I cannot eat six donuts myself. I would gain weight, Eric objected. I looked at Eric and felt pity for him. Poor Eric, so close to realizing the truth that donuts were bad for one's health, and yet he was so far away. Put some of them in the fridge at the police station and save them for later, I suggested. Nah, I'll bring them in case you change your mind. If I leave them at the station, someone I don't like might nick them, Eric replied. Okay, do what feels good for you. I said, and hoped that I would be able to withstand the sweet poison in a couple of hours when the fatigue and boredom made me hungry. So, what is our first call out of the night? Eric asked. There is a noise complaint about the mansion at 562 Wine Road. We better tell them to sip it, I replied. Isn't that mansion lying by itself? How can there be a noise complaint about it? Eric asked. I have no idea. Have you been there? I replied. Yes, it used to be old McDonald's farm, but it was recently bought by an actor, Eric said. Oh really? Is it someone famous? I asked. His name is David Tui. I can't believe you haven't heard about him, Michael. Um, was he the actor in Wolf Creek? I asked in confusion. Nah, don't worry about it. David Tui is an unknown actor. His acting career didn't buy him the mansion. His lotto win did, Eric revealed. Oh well, let's tell this David Tui to shut up so we can cut it off our list, shall we? I said and started walking towards the car. Aye aye, boss. Eric smirked and followed me to the car as we drove off from the police station. We arrived outside David Tui's mansion an hour later. It was a creepy place. I was particularly spooked by the full moon that shone in the night sky with a bleak white light that illuminated a haunted old tree. Watch out for the tall grass. There might be snakes and other nasties in it, Eric instructed. I sighed. I'd been transferred to Yara Valley four years earlier during the first Melbourne lockdown. Four years and 15 lockdowns later, I was more of a country guy than a city guy, so I knew very well that I should stay clear of the tall grass. We knocked on the mansion's door, and an eccentric man in a Kurt Cobain haircut came to greet us. Greetings, men in uniform. I bid thee welcome to the mansion of Dangerous Dave. I am David Tui, the famous actor and the current proprietor of Old MacDonald's farm. David said. Cut to crap, David. You are not a famous actor. Your videos have about as few views as Martin Lundquist's audiobooks. I said. As David gave me a sour look, I wondered what the hell had flown into me. Why would I at random compare an unknown actor with an unknown author? It didn't make sense at all. Was someone else controlling my life? David's facial expression changed and he spoke with a jovial voice. Oh yes, Martin Lundquist. I used to work with him back when I lived in Sydney. We were moving furniture together. Those were the best days of my life. This is the reason I have been moving furniture tonight. Which I assume is the reason for the noise complaint? The Johnsons who complained lived two kilometers away. Your removal of furniture cannot have been the reason for the complaint. Eric objected. I gave Eric a sour look. He wasn't meant to reveal who had thrown in the noise complaint. If he did, he could cause more problems than we aimed to resolve. Oh yes! The Johnsons! Such a lovely couple. I had invited them for dinner tonight. Chicken, beans and rice. 
such a lovely meal I had prepared for them, and yet they never showed up. Would you care to accompany me for dinner, officers? I reflected on my options. I knew that I wasn't meant to accept meals from suspects according to police protocol. However, I had lost my respect for the Victorian Police Department because of their role as Chairman Dan's attack dogs. The only reason I was still working there was that I couldn't find any other job. Dinner sounds lovely. Heaps better than the junk food we normally eat during a night shift, I said and smiled. Are you sure about this? This is against police protocol, Eric objected. Yes, I'm sure. If I clock my lunch break on the phone app, I am free to eat wherever I see fit. Am I not? I argued. I guess let's do things your way, Eric replied. David smiled and spoke. It is so lovely to have you join me, officers. Please come with me to the dining hall. It is time for me to present you with a soiree worthy of royalty. We went with David to the dining hall, where he entertained us with the food and with the monologues from his acting career. Everything was fine until Eric had a psychotic breakdown. David has poisoned us, Michael! I'm feeling so sick! Eric exclaimed. What are you talking about? I'm feeling fine, I replied. No, this man lured us here to poison and torture us. I am sure he called in the noise complaint himself to trick us. I will not fall here. Stand back, Michael! Eric shouted. Eric's shouting didn't make any sense to me. Why did he tell me to stand back when I was sitting down and enjoying the delicious dinner that David served us? Things turned worse when Eric pulled out his pistol to shoot David, but accidentally shot me in the shoulder instead. After that, he dropped his pistol to the ground and started vomiting. David ran up to Eric and took his pistol. Michael, what do I do? He whimpered. Call the police, I shouted. But you are the police, David objected. Call some other police, you bloody idiot. I shouted in pain, as having a bullet in my shoulder was not a pleasant experience. David obliged with my instructions, and a while later, other police officers and paramedics arrived at the scene and took us to the hospital. David's delicious soiree did not cause Eric's food poisoning. Instead, it was the expired donuts he had bought from the dodgy convenience store that was the culprit. The donuts had been infested with mold, and the spores had driven Eric insane. Because of the shooting, I lost my job as I broke against police protocol by accepting to dine with a suspect. The worst part was that Eric didn't lose his job. Instead, his mental breakdown matched with the psychological profile for the police health enforcement squad. So he got promoted and landed a cushy job with Chairman Dan's regime. The end.